now let's move on to the next company process. Again, if you want to look at the whole research, you can look at it on Teachable. So this is basically a Dutch company. And the reason why we're looking at this company is because of Tencent. I'm pretty sure or most of us should know Tencent, but if you are not familiar later on, I'll, I'll touch briefly on it. So Tencent is in China and Naspers, an investment firm, actually bought Tencent in 2001. So 20 years ago, they bought it for 34 million and they had, I think, slightly more than 30% stake. They have held most of the stake th throughout the two decades. And right now, that stake, even after selling off a bit, is worth about 226 billion. And that is a return of 6,600 times in 20 years. So a very huge profitable deal for them. And, and I mean, kudos to them for being able to hold it through the 20 years. I mean, the share price has gone up and down. And as an investment firm, there are probably a lot of pressure for them to sell off it, but they just held most of it, it through, throughout. And that's a cargo of 50% for 20 years. I mean, very little people or firms can achieve this track record. And however, we are not investing in NASPERS but we are looking at process, which is related. So this is their group structure, where Naspers is a South African firm, and it owns process. And process is listed in Netherlands with a secondary listing in South Africa. They are basically the same company, just different entities. And process own a lot of different companies under their e-commerce portfolio and under their social and internet platforms. Here is where you can see they own about 29% of Tencent now. And then the only difference between Naspers and Process is Naspers also has just a few minor South African assets. So the non-South African assets are all held through Process and we are looking at Process. So one thing to note is they have a cross-coding structure, which can be a bit complicated and we need to be more careful with the numbers, but we have, we have dealt with the numbers for you in, in our videos. And in 2021 quarter three, which is now, they are actually in the midst of completing a share short deal between Naspers and Process. So what is happening is for Process, if we do invest in Process, we are the Process public shareholders, the float, free float shareholders. And then Naspers owns, used to own 73% of Process, but Process also owns about 4% of Naspers. So there's this circularity going on. And then now what they are proposing for the transaction is Process will buy more Naspers shares and they'll buy it from the existing shareholders of Naspers. So in return, those existing shareholders of Naspers, if they want to give out their shares to process, in return, they'll be getting new process shares. So effectively, they are just moving more assets from Naspers to process. And ultimately, what it means for us is if this deal goes through in a few weeks time or in one, one or two weeks, yeah, that means process shareholders would be owning 60% of process assets. So just now we look at all these different companies, that means 60% of them will be owned by the process shareholders and 40% by Naspers after accounting for the cross-holding structure and calculations. And one of the reasons is just Naspers is highly undervalued compared to what it owns now. And one of the cited reasons is because Naspers has become so big, has grown so big that it dominates the, the South African index. And a lot of the fund managers there, they have mandates that they can't be overly concentrated. So whenever Naspers share price goes up, they become overly concentrated, they have to sell. And then that keeps the price low. And that's why the management is doing this deal to try to shift the value out of Naspers actually into process, which is in Netherlands, so a different country. And they say that in the future, this more flexible structure will allow them to, to unlock more shareholder values. So in March this year, the management actually give gave an estimate of the net asset value of all the different investments that they help, either public, publicly listed or private companies. And they estimate it at about 270 billion US. And process owns 60% of that. So that's about 160 billion. And on a per share value is about 154 euro. So what's interesting here is process share price. I think right now it's also about 80 euro, but the underlying asset is actually 150, around 154 euro. So that's almost like half of it or double, depending on which year you see it. So it's, it's just on this aspect, it's highly undervalued and the management is trying to unlock the value to try to close the gap. And just as a side, for Naspers, the shareholders has benefited pretty well, compounding at a cargo of 20% for, for 22 years. 
so a 52 bagger. So for this, we just want to quickly zoom in into process validation to see how undervalued is it. What are the considerations to think about? And process has operating subsidiaries, investments listed or unlisted, and the big one is actually Tencent. So we are actually looking look at it now. And a quick overview for Tencent for those who are not familiar is the largest online media firm in China. Basically, their crown jewel is WeChat. So it's a messaging app that is like WhatsApp, Facebook, is used for e-commerce, it's like Netflix, it's like Spotify, it's like basically everything. Like everyone has WeChat in China. You can't survive without WeChat in China and including for payments. So, and then they have a lot of different arms and they are also a, a investment firm where they invested in 700 companies globally. And a lot of the companies are actually big successful companies. So Tencent is basically number one in chat messaging, games, content like video, music, news, mobile payment, browser. The only thing that they are number two is public cloud, where Alibaba is, is number one. So to value Tencent, we, because to understand process relation, we need to first look at Tencent's value. And we will just do a quick one where we look at their operating business. So it consists their value added services segment, which consists of gaming and also their, their media platform, like the, the video and news or music segment subscription basis. And then they also have advertising revenue and fintech revenue, particularly from their WeChat payment and also from their crop business and then other businesses. And then they have this whole investment portfolio, which we'll look at later. So for the operating business, we'll just look at their operating profit for 2020, which is about roaming 184 billion. And that's on a revenue of 480 billion. So this is about, I think about a 40% margin, operating profit margin. However, if you look at a lot of the analysts or people in the public, they'll just take this number and then apply a multiple. But what they don't realize is within this operating profit, there's a other gains of 57 billion. And if you look at that breakdown for this 57 billion, a lot of these items, they are actually related to their investments. So if depending on how you value Tencent, if you are valuing Tencent's operating business and then separately the investment business, then we can't include all this income here because then there'll be double counting. So in our calculations later, we will be removing almost everything, the yellow highlighted ones. So about 50, 50 something million from the operating profit. Then we need to think about what type of multiple do we apply to the operating business. So let's just have a quick historical look at the historical growth. Revenue wise, it has been growing at 20 to 50% for the past decades with different segments growing at different speeds. And for their operating profit, they have compounded it at about high 20s, whether you look at it in the past five years or past 10 years. So this is just roughly uh, area of fracture, but overall is about 20 something percent. And we'll just talk about the multiple first. So based on that high 20 group historical growth, assuming that in the future, they'll probably achieve something like this, given that all their segments have a long runway and they also have negative networking capital business, sorry, ne negative networking capital dynamics because of their subscription products for music, video, uh, news, books, and other stuff. So they get a lot of free cash flow upfront. So we think that roughly a reasonable, reasonable multiple to pay will be 30 to 40 times. This is just to get a rough sense. And then if we use the operating profit and we take out a lot of the other gains, put in some tax rates, we will be getting an enterprise value for the operating business. And this is, this is where just now we discussed that difference between enterprise value and equity value. So for the enterprise, value for the operations only that is coming out at about roaming B three to four trillion roaming B depending on low to high scenarios. Next, let's look, let, let's look at the investment portfolio, which is pretty big too. So Tencent invests in more than 700 or even 800 companies and their top 10 are these companies and you'll probably recognize quite some of them, Meituan Tianping, the delivery, one, one, one part of the business is delivery in China. And then C Limited, JD, Ping Toto, Tesla, Epic Games, and blah, blah, blah. So, Pecky, who writes that not boring, he actually compiled 100 investments. He created a spreadsheet to try to estimate the value, how much stakes does Tencent own. And then, if it's a listed company, he used the market value. If it's not, he used the latest private funding value. So, we have taken his sheets and then did some updating because he did it last year. And then we cross checked uh, uh, the top. 
I think 12 or 13 companies, which makes up 79% of the value. So it's just a rough check, but it, it, we are checking about 80% of the numbers at a oh. high level. And after doing this, the value of the 100 companies is coming out at about USD 320 billion. But about 40 billion of that relates to subsidiaries owned by them, Tencent. So again, that's double counting. So we have to take this 40 billion out. So the non-subsidiaries will be just about 280 billion. And just one point to note is, we know that we are in a bull market now. Generally, the market has been going up and Tencent owns a lot of technology companies and they've been growing up pretty, pretty high. So when Pecky did it last year in August, this number was only 190 billion, but it has now gone up to 320 billion. I mean, we didn't look at, we didn't go and research all these companies. So maybe if we think it's overvalued on average, maybe we might want to consider discounts, some discounts on this value. So we will look at it later and we will be focusing on this 280 billion for the non-subsidiaries. So that 280 billion comes here, we convert it into Reming Peak, and then we apply a discount of zero to 30% in case some of them are overvalued on, on, in aggregate. And then we get this value for the portfolio here. And then we also did another thing where for the high scenario, maybe Tencent has a, someone can say Tencent has a very good track record in their investment portfolio. Maybe in the future, they can compound this, their investment portfolio at 20% for the next five years. But if we investors just want a 15% return and we use it as a discount rate, that means that this 1.8 trillion is actually worth more at 2.3 trillion because they, they are going to compound faster than what we require as an invest, investor. So the point is after putting in all this, we consider the enterprise value for the operating business and then we consider the investment portfolio values adjusted for what we said just now. At a per share terms, 10 cents value is coming up at about 500 something to 750 Hong Kong dollars per share. So when we did this relation in July, 10 cents share price was about 550. So close to the low, low number here. So the, the only point we are making here and we need to make here is just, it seems that 10 cents share price seems pretty reasonable at that point of time, given that it's such a dominant company in China with a strong word. But of course, we are discussing the China risk later. But if we put that aside first, this number seems pretty reasonable. And we just need to know whether it's reasonable or unreasonable, whether it's highly overvalued or seems okay. Since then, actually, the share price has gone down even more. Right now, I just checked, it's about 480. So it's, it's become even more undervalued right now. Yep. So some of you might be thinking, why, then why not buy 10 cents straight? Why look at process? And here is where we'll come in. So process, as we said just now, to value process, we need to value everything, including 10 cents. 10 cents is actually the biggest value. So now let's look at how 10 cents value translate into process after considering process stakes in it. And then we we'll also look at other businesses. So just some inputs in our spreadsheet, which you can download from Teachable too. Process free float shareholders, which are us public shareholders, will own 60% of the underlying asset. And if the deal goes through, process free float will be about 880 million shares. 10 cents market cap was about 690 billion US dollars in July. Process owns 29%. And then we, the public shareholders, if we invest in it, we own 60% of process. So I'm just going to multiply that 690 billion by 29% and then multiply it by 60%, convert it from US dollar to Euro and divide by the number of shares and we get 114 Euro per share. So just now we mentioned that this tension share price seems reasonable. So that's 114 euro per share, but process share price in July was about 80 euro. I think now it's a bit lower than 80. So just for 10 cents value, the share price is already lower than process stakes in 10 cents value. Some might argue that there might be some conglomerate discount because you are holding it second level, but this is still a big gap. You get a 40% gap here. Process also have other listed investments. And the two big ones are Mew.ru, which is one of the largest online media company in just like 10 cents. In, but in Russia. And they also own 4% of delivery hero, which is a delivery services in a lot of countries in the world. So those companies using the same methodology, they are worth about five euro per share. So you can see this is relatively small compared to 10 cents value, which is 114 per share. But I mean, it's just another bonus. So 114 plus five gets us to 119 for all the publicly listed investments. 
And next, there are a lot of things here, but just follow my cursor, laser pointer. And if we compare these values to the process share price of about 79 euro per share, if we just look at Tencent first, 114 compared with 79, that means the margin of safety is 30, low 30%. 30 and if we buy into this, that means we are getting Tencent at a 30% MOS. We are getting, and Tencent will continue to grow in the future. So they will continue to compound. Then we get the other listed and unlisted investment for free. We get the operating businesses for free. So these are all optionalities that can potentially turn out well. And if we use management's estimate of 154 NAV per share, that gives us an upside of 95%. I mean, in the end, there will probably some, be some conglomerate discount, but the point is there are quite some upside over here. And even without that, just looking at Tencent, it seems that there are quite some value there already. On the risk, if you are dealing with something with China, of course, especially the large tech companies, there's that China risk. And then maybe the, the other risk is the, the management might take their investments value and go and reinvest in something bad and, and destroy all the value. And the third risk is the holding discount would persist. So first on the China risk, points of this video, you can check them out at our multi bagger research series. At MoneyWise Smart, we do deep dive research into wonderful companies to own for the long term. We have provided this research in our research series, so definitely check them out at the link provided if you want to invest in good companies. I promise, you will really benefit a lot from this research. Do also join our Facebook group where we discuss interesting investment concepts and businesses. Thank you for watching and see you in our next video.